Hey everybody, my name is Avery, and today I wanted to talk about how to sort sprites on a screen. Um, we're also going to be breaking down different ways of sorting um, using C++, um, some built-in standard algorithms, and defining them yourself. But if you want to know exactly what I mean, um, here's a game that I worked on before. And as you can see, there are some trees that are lined up. And as you walk through them, your player kind of lines up with them. Uh, one thing you can say, like, imagine if there was no sorting at all, um, it would just draw them in the order that you drew them. So if you're drawing the player last, no matter what, the player is always going to be on top. But because they're sorted, um, at least in this case, by the Y in, um, axis, they are drawn correctly. Um, so that's just one way of doing it. You can even see, like, going up here against this wall, um, the wall doesn't draw above you or anything like that. The player is drawn in the correct position. So that's just one example. And I'll quickly show you how that was done. That was done, um, I'm just going to quickly just over the code. This was not probably the best way of doing it. Um, but first off, I have a, a vector of every single sprite, every single entity that needs to be drawn. And basically what I did was just create a buffer vector and basically just loop through every single one of those and check okay is this y-axis higher or lower and then based off of that move it around in the new buffer vector um, not going to explain too much but that's what I originally was doing and for the most part that wasn't a problem and there wasn't really any issues with that um, so let's go ahead and jump out of here but there's a lot more ways of doing that um, here's another game that I worked on where you play as this little wolf and he pushes away the sheep um, you try to bring the sheep down into the arena in the middle and over time more sheep are going to spawn in so I just wanted to figure out what's the best way to sort these sheep how do I make it so the sheep and the dog that they line up correctly and that nothing's overlapping and that the images are drawn correctly uh, one example as you can see this is with a 3D or isometric view but basically imagine you have all these tiles or you have all these sheep um, or trees in the previous game you want them drawn in the correct order um, so as you can see, here's incorrect and here's correct. There's another YouTuber um, that whose game I think is a pretty good example. His name is Boxbrain. I'll have this video linked in the description. But as you can see with his game, you can the apples are in front of the tree. Make sure that they're not rendered behind. Um, like the roof of the whale isn't rendered below the whale. The same thing well, or the same thing with the doors and all these plants and random things that are in the house. They're all drawn in the correct order. So this is obviously something really important. Um, a little while back, I actually reached out to one of my friends, and I just mentioned, okay, this is how I'm drawing the sheep. Uh, this way, I'm just looking through them and figuring out which one's the best size. It obviously isn't the best solution. Um, so he had mentioned that in C++, I can find a sort algorithm. So actually, I have it right here. Um, and here is the sort algorithm. The sort algorithm, you need to include it. Um, okay, maybe one of these includes it a different way, but usually you just include the standard sort using, uh, I think you include algorithm, um, we'll be looking more into it after this, but there's, you put in the beginning and the end of your vector, and you can pass in a function, this function is just going to be what's checking it, um, you can also use a lambda, and the more example we're going to be doing, uh, after this, it's going to be using a lambda, but basically we're just saying, okay, if that's a rect, um, if it's the Y, um, compared to this Y, just return true or false. And the sort function is able to actually do that. Uh, we're not going to break down too much on how the sort function works, but we are going to compare the sort function to other um, algorithms, basically. So let me close out of here and close out of there as well. Okay. And so this code that I made for this video it is going to be in the description. I'll have a GitHub linked for it um, as soon as I can. It's using Raylib. Um, in fact, maybe I don't have it in the Raylib directory. Uh, let me see where I quickly have it. Sorts. Okay. Um, so I just had a bunch of different examples I was looking at. But we're using Raylib to actually do the rendering. But we can actually go ahead and look in the code. Um, in the code, I have. So I originally had to include algorithm, but I think one of these other ones probably includes that. But I had different tests. So this one is using the sort algorithm, as we looked before. Instead of passing it a function, we're just using a lambda function, so we're defining it directly in here. Um, we don't want to just compare the y's. We want to compare it with the height. Because imagine, I'll quickly draw it. 
Um, but you basically just want to have the height be the correct height. Because imagine we have this sprite right there and this sprite right there. If this sprite is down here, um, we want to draw them over. But imagine this sprite, we have another sprite that's much smaller. And if this sprite's down here, you want to draw them. But if this sprite's right here, we still want the other one above it. So it's not just the Y. It needs to be the Y plus the height. So depending on what language you're using and what library you're using, um, maybe Y is at the top and Y is at the bottom. In my case, Y is going to be at the top. And uh, we're adding the height to it, basically. Though that actually just made me realize maybe a lot of my examples, I had a plus. Uh, maybe that should be a minus, but we're going to be skipping past that for now. Um, so the sort just starts at the beginning and starts at the ending and then it just has this quick comparison with this lambda function. There's another one that's called stable. This is using the stable sort um, algorithm and you do the same thing beginning and end and then you pass in the algorithm or the function. Um, here is one with loops. This is somewhat similar to what I originally had in the first game I showed you. Um, it's all just manually done with loops. Down here, it's uh, basically the same thing. It's a for loop, and instead of um, having indices and whatnot, we're using iterators. Um, so it just works with an iterator. And then in this one, it's using this max element um, function, if I see it right here. Max element is pretty much the same, beginning, end, and then you pass in this quick comparison like that. But one thing to note, that for the loop, the iterator and the max element um, I, could, I may be wrong about the max element and how I did it, but in these ones I had a sorted sprites um, that were being returned. Uh, so basically and it wasn't actually affecting the original um, a vector, I was affecting a new vector and I was just having that one replace the original one. So I actually have a test right here. It'll go ahead and generate some sprites and spit out some of their coordinates and then I'll show, okay after this one, how long it takes to uh, do, uh, I guess how long it takes to run against every single one of these, basically. And I guess, um, here, probably need to reset this every single time. Okay, let's jump back into the same directory. Of course, we don't want to clear it right there. Um, I was just thinking maybe the numbers aren't in the correct order, but that's all right. Um, so let's go ahead and run it. It's going to create a window, but I have it close the window immediately just so we can look at this test quickly. Um, oh, that didn't close it. Oh, that's okay. Um, but basically, here's the original inputs. As you can see, they're all random, especially by looking at the Ys. Here you can check for the first solution. Uh, the first solution, they're all in order. It's 147. 938 and 147, 147, 147, and then you can see for the most part they're all the same. Um, this standard for loop, it's not always perfect, at least the way that I have it implemented. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit off right there. But you can see this one takes 15 microseconds, 15, and then the sort is 3 microseconds, the stable sort's 4, and the max element was 13 also. Uh, the max element, even though it's a standard function, it's not as fast as these other two standard functions. But of course, this is actually only using, it's loading in a sprite sheet, it's only drawing 21 sprites. So we can actually go ahead and try to increase this. Um, let me let's do this real quick. Um, let's try to draw, let's try to do 10,000. And let's not print out their actual coordinates because that's going to be too much. And let's make sure the window's closed. It's going to give a sec fault at the end, but that's not going to make a difference. So we close the window, and let's quickly just make these random sprites. We have something down here for when I click the mouse button that does it. So we'll just copy that for the random ones. If I can jump back to where I was. Okay.
Um, sprite. Generate five random. Okay. Um, so that's right there. We want to have its random values. Okay. So that's going to be looping through a thousand. And let's just quickly compile that. Make sure there's no problem. And run it. It's probably going to take a second um, to create them all. But as you can see, here is spit out um, basically information. So here's the Sable sort. Sable sort is 2,000. The regular sort is 3,000, almost 4,000. But as you can see, our for loop, uh, it's not actually as bad as the iterator, but the iterator and the max element are pretty high. Because um, the max element, I'm pretty sure it's basically just checking like every single thing possible. Um, so the Sable sort in this one looks like it was the best solution. Sometimes I've done tests and it looks like the sort's also the best. Um, so it kind of just depends. But now we can go ahead and actually try displaying these so you can see what this actually looks like. Um, let me just comment out all of this actually. Okay, so this is going to be drawing it with no sort of sorting at all. So you can see here's all the players. I'm going to quickly draw a bunch so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So here, this white guy is behind him, and he's still behind him in any direction. As you can see, he's behind him even though he should be in front. So let's just try out another one of these sort algorithms. They're, for the most part, they're all going to work correctly. Um, you're not going to notice any difference between any of them. Um, okay, so that one looks like it was... There's a little bit of flickering, I guess, as things pass them, uh, using this algorithm that I'm working on. Um, not ex not exactly sure what was causing it. That's just the for loop one. We already knew before there was a bit of an issue with that. This is using the iterator, and let me just have it run that way. Um, the iterator works a little bit better, um, as you can see. So Superman is behind them, and now he's in front of them. Um, should just keep that order. So Superman's, okay, see, you flipped right there. So here's the actual sort algorithm, which I think is one of the best ones. Um, draw a bunch, I guess Deadpool is behind this guy. Um, so he, he's drawn in the correct order. So this works for all of them. I mean, I can run them, but they're all going to work correctly. I would say the stable sort and the sort are the two best options. Um, if anyone wants to comment about other ways or that could be done, um, or maybe even ways to make it faster or... I don't know, basically any sort of thing that I might have talked about incorrectly. Let me know. Um, so this video, it's showing how to actually sort out um, sprites to draw on the screen, but we're also doing a comparison of different sorts. So I'm not even sure what the best title for this video is. If you guys also have a good title, um, feel free to leave it down below as well. Um, once again, I'm going to try to link everything in the description, so if you guys can check out the code. Here, actually, I wanted to include this real quick example. So here we're drawing a lot more. Um, this is about 5,000 sprites. This is using the iterator option. Um, we're getting three FPS. This is unbearable. And we'll quickly switch over to the Sable sort one. Um, it's one of the better ones. And we can see a comparison, 60 FPS. This is 5,000 sprites. And they're running perfectly. So I think this is probably one of the best examples to show how this all works perfectly. Um, not just they're all being rendered perfectly, but they're all being sorted uh, perfectly. There's too many to actually follow along and make sure that they're sorted perfectly, but they are. Um, so yeah, thanks again for watching and bye.